Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Samantha. I am a customer experience manager here at On The Clock. Today presenting the content to you will be the lovely Bryn, who is also part of our customer experience team. Today's webinar is gonna be about job and project costing, so we hope you are as excited as we are to go through this content. Without further ado, I will hand this on over to Bryn. I will be posting a poll just to see where you heard about us, and then also I will be in charge of the Q&A, so go ahead and ask your questions in the chat. All right, Bryn, I'm gonna hand it off. All right, thank you so much, Sam. Really appreciate that. Uh, so again, I'm Bryn. I will be doing today's uh, demonstration on job and project costing. So uh, please feel free to log into your account and follow along with us. Uh, you know, you can log in and you can set everything up as I go through it if you'd like, or you can sit back and relax and just watch uh, and kind of enjoy what I'm showing you. And then if you'd like to watch our replay video that we are going to send out later, uh, you can then uh, do so and go through your account then. So I am on the ontheclock.com uh, webpage. So I'm gonna go ahead and get logged into my account here. So in my account, I am logged in as a administrator. So admins and managers do have access to our settings icon here, and they do have access to our departments, jobs, and job and project costing setup uh, options that are listed. So they can come in and they can add things to them. Uh, something to be mindful of though, is if you are a manager trying to set these up, if you do come in and you add a department or a uh, job that we have, you're not gonna have the ability to delete any of them. So only administrators uh, can do that. So we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, take a look at departments here. So again, here's our department section. You'll see in the top right hand corner, we have a add department button. So you can just go ahead and click on this. It's gonna ask you for that department name and then a job code if you would like to enter a job code, or excuse me, a department code. Uh, you don't have to, it is optional. And then once you have set that up, just go ahead and press save. And then you will see that on your list here. And on this list, you're also going to see a edit pencil as well as a red X. So again, if you did need to remove a department, you can go ahead and click on this red X. So similarly to that, under settings, we have jobs. And jobs is where you can come in and again, add those jobs in that you would like your employees to be selecting at uh, punch in. So we'll go ahead, we'll click on this add job button here, and it's gonna ask you for a job name and a job code. And again, that job code is optional. If you would like to enter that, you can. Uh, otherwise, you can continue without it. So once you've added your list of jobs here, you're gonna see the job name listed, a code if it's there, and then that edit pencil, and then the red X. If you did want to come in and make an edit at any time, uh, maybe I wanted to maybe change the job code number, I could just click on this edit pencil. It's gonna open this up for me. And then whatever changes I make, I just can go ahead and press save and it will update my list right here. So this is a very uh, simplistic view. If you're looking for something just for your employees to uh, track a couple uh, items of information when they're punching it out, uh, maybe you're looking for something a little bit more uh, intricate. So we also have under settings, we have job and project costing setup. So under here, you're going to see a more variety. Uh, we do offer three different categories. So we have customer projects and tasks and you can actually rename these categories uh, to better fit your needs. So for example, I've actually relabeled my customer to customer slash event. So if you did need to uh, relabel it, just click on this edit pencil right here. You're gonna see it turn to this. You can go ahead, enter what you would like it uh, to be changed to. And then once you've done that, just go ahead and press save. And that's it. So once you've labeled these the way that you would like them to, uh, these categories to be broken out, you can then come in here and add your customer project and task in each of these line items. And as well on each of those, we do have codes that you can associate with them. And you'll also notice here for each of these items that I have added, I do have a drop down arrow. So if I click on this drop down arrow, again, I'm in my customer uh, section. I see I have sub projects. So if I would like to list a sub project under uh, this customer and make it just unique only to them so that project is only visible when I select brand, I can do that. And then same thing as well, I have another uh, drop down arrow. So I'll go ahead and click on this and you can also nest tasks under these items right here. So again, these would just be specific to the item that you are nesting it under. 
And if you do need something, you know, maybe you want to add a project that you want to show up uh, regardless of what customer they've chosen, then you're going to go ahead and list it here. All of these sections right here will be separate from one another. So they're not going to look at each other and say, okay, because Bryn was selected, only these ones are going to show. Um, if that is the setup you're looking for, just go ahead and list them this way. And then also with each of these, again, it's gonna show you uh, at the bottom of each uh, line item of three that are uh, open and available for you to enter new information. So once you've added your information and you wanna go ahead, maybe you wanna add more than three, you wanna add five. Um, once you've added the three that you would like, go ahead, press the save button, and you're gonna see three more boxes pop up. Uh, on top of saving, we also have here a red X. So this little red X, uh, if you hover over it, it does say delete. So if I click on this red X here, it's going to go ahead and remove that uh, item from my list. And if maybe you, you know, wanted to archive your information because uh, maybe it's not being used anytime soon, just go ahead and click on that red X. And then you'll also notice by the save button, we have a show inactive. So if I actually click on this, you're going to see my view change a little bit. And then you're going to see all of my uh, deleted information that I have here. So maybe uh, I want to go ahead and reactivate it. I'm going to click on this little checkbox and then I'm going to go ahead and press save. And now we can see that Bryn has been added back to my list. So something I do want to uh, point out though, just so you are aware. So you can in the customer project and task section, you can archive uh, these items right here. So again, when you delete them, you can reactivate them. Uh, however, if you are under the uh, departments or the job section, so these two, if you delete those items, uh, we do not have a way to uh, reactivate them. So just be mindful of that. And just because you are, you know, uh, deleting a item from your list here, that doesn't mean that we're going to remove any of that information that the employee has selected on their time card. So again, if my employee selected that they were working with the customer Bryn, and then I went ahead and deleted this uh, item a couple months later. If I look back, I'm gonna still see that they were working with that customer brand. So that information will still be there. So next I'm gonna go ahead, uh, after you've come in and you've set this up, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next steps that you need to take in your employee's profile. So in the employee profile, you're gonna go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom. And on the left hand side, you're gonna see job and project costing. So in this section, we're gonna see those, uh, those categories that we just talked about. So customer, project, task, job, and department. And you'll see next to that, we have a box right here. So if I click on this box, you're gonna see a couple different options. We have off, on, and on required. So basically what these means is if it is set to off, this is not going to be displayed to your employee. If you have it set to on, it's gonna be on and they will be able to see it on their punch page. However, it's not a requirement that they choose something from this uh, drop down menu. It's going to be optional to them. And then we have on required. So if you do have it set to on required, it is going to force them to choose something before they can complete their punch in. And then something else I do wanna point out before I hop into my employee account here, under my additional options, I do have department. So if you wanted to assign an employee to a specific department that they're always in, then you can go ahead and you can do so right here. Uh, but if they do transfer departments, then again, you'll wanna make sure that you have department transferring on. And then once you've made the changes that you would like for them, go ahead and just press this save settings button. And that's it, it's gonna say that your employee saved, so you're all set and good to go for those employees. Uh, if you've gone in again to settings and you set up your uh, jobs or your uh, customer task and project, your employees are gonna see that on their punch page now. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna log out of my administrative account and I'm going to log into my employee account here for you. So I'm on my test employee. I can see my current status is set to out. So I can also see on the punch card, I can see those options that I have in, that I did have enabled in the profile. So department, we'll go ahead and choose sales. For job, we'll choose customer service. And uh, customer event, we'll go ahead and choose Bryn. And for project, let's go ahead and choose lead. And then last but not least, let's choose a task. We'll do process implementation. So now that I have filled these out, we have my punch button displayed here. And again, if you did notice, if I had this not selected, you will see this please select a job uh, before I can actually punch in. So we'll go ahead, we'll choose customer service one more time. There's my lovely punch in button. 
and we'll go ahead and confirm my punch in. So great, I have my success message. I can see that I have su successfully punched in at 210. So let's go ahead and log back into my admin account and let's just see what that looks like uh, on the time cards page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my time card icon right here. And now I can see I'm looking at my current P period of 1115 to 1121. I can see my 1116 punch at 210 p.m. by my test employee. So if you are looking to see this information uh, that they did log when they punched, uh, you can view it in a couple different ways. So first, let's just go ahead and open up this employee punch. And I can see here 210, that's the punch, and all the information they selected is listed here. And if I wanted to get a little bit more of just a quick view to see the information that was logged uh, right here under show, I have a box. If I click show punches, we're gonna see my uh, time cards calculate. And down below, we can see the punch time, the department and the job listed that that employee did select. So only the, the department and jobs that the employee selected are going to be visible here on the time cards page. So anything like the customer project or task that they selected is not going to be visible on this right here. So if you are looking for that, what we're gonna actually go ahead and do is on the time cards page, let's go ahead and click more. And on this more dropdown, we can see right here, we have job and project costing reports. So now that I've selected this, I can see I'm looking at my job costing reports page. It's gonna ask me for either a date or a period to select. So if you are looking for a custom date range, you can go ahead and enter those in here. Otherwise, you can choose this period and this is going to line up with your pay periods that you have set up in your account. So let's go ahead and let's navigate to one of my pay periods I have. And then last under my report filters, I do have manager and employee. So if you are looking to filter by specific managers, you can do so. And then same thing for employees, if you're looking just to filter by a specific employee, you can do that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and keep them both set to all. And then right here on the right side, we have totaling options. So for totaling options, it's gonna ask us to check off what we would like to have shown on the page. And on top of that, we can also reorganize these in the uh, way that we would like them to display. So let's go ahead, let's check off employee. We'll say we want department, uh, we'll do customer project and task. And again, we can see here that they are visible. Uh, and maybe again, I want to reorganize these. I don't want them viewing in this order. So we're just gonna click on this and we're just gonna pull it up. So now I have it uh, going from top to bottom, customer department, employee, project and task. And now reading left to right, again, I can see customer department, uh, employee, project and task. Oops. Let me move this up one more time. That's better. Okay, so employee, customer, department, project, and task. And if I scroll down a little bit more, I can see here I have it broken out, again, first by the employee. I can see that this employee did not select a customer or event. They did not select a department or a project or a task. So I do have 1.5 hours logged right here. But I can also see that they did select customer A, they worked in the department of sales, they worked on the New York project for the process implementation, and that was a total of 27 hours. And again, reading across, I have customer B they worked with, they did not select a department, they did work on the project uh, Chicago with research, and that was a total of 3.5. So again, depending on how you would like this to view, um, if you want additional information, maybe you want by job, and you're not looking for your uh, project uh, customer uh, department, we can go ahead and we can uncheck those. And let's go ahead and do by entry date as well. So again, you can move these in the order that you would like them. If you decide maybe you want to buy entry date first, let's go ahead and move that to the top. And again, it's going to break it down by the day, by those employees and those jobs they worked on. So now that I've selected this in the way that I would like it to view, I can see I have a subtotal line for a total of 16 hours. And I can read these all the way across. And if I actually keep scrolling to the bottom, you're gonna see a grand total right here. So it's just gonna add all of my subtotal items in each of these categories up for me so I can see that grand total. And again, if you do see these dashes and you are not interested in having these dashes and you do want to see an item selected here, uh, to avoid this, you are going to want to go into your employee profile and choose under their job and project costing section that you want their selection to be on and required. 
uh, again, if it is set to required, then they're going to have to choose something and you will see uh, an item here and not a dash. And the last thing I do want to point out on this report, so you can see here at my bottom left, I have override hours. So you might notice on your report a override hours as well as an auto um, deduct break. So if you do happen to have an automatically deducted break, it's just going to go ahead and total those uh, auto deducted breaks for you. And it's just going to list it for that total that happened in that pay period. And then for the override hours, uh, for example, right here, I can see that I have on 11-8 my salaried employee. Um, Basically what's going on here, because my salaried employee is set up as salaried, their time is auto added to the time cards every single day for me. So because of this, and they're not selecting an item because they're not actually punching, it's just gonna go ahead and leave a dash right there. So this is what this is uh, showing right here. And once you're uh, all set with the report, and again, it's uh, viewing in the way that you would like it to show, we do have a export to Excel button right here. So you just go ahead and click on this. Uh, for me, it does pull up right here on my bottom left-hand corner. You can go ahead, click on that. It's gonna open it up for you. And here's just a uh, previously pulled report that I had. Again, it was my employee name, the job, customer event, project, and task with those hours all calculated for me. So I have my subtotal hours and then those bro hours broken out. And then I have my grand total here at the bottom. And again, we did have that override hour section listed here as well. So this would be how this report is uh, going to show. And again, depending on how you organize those items under that totaling option on that top right hand side, it's gonna uh, determine how these items are going to show in these columns going across your Excel report. All right. Oop. Go ahead and cancel that. And that will conclude our demonstration on the job and project costing uh, going in your account and setting it up, how an employee selects these items. So um, we do have a couple questions for you, another uh, poll coming your way. So we do want to know which of these that you think you're going to utilize the most, whether you think it's going to be our job and project costing setup, just the jobs or the maybe just the departments. Um, so go ahead and select what you think is going to be the best fit for you in your business. And then something else we do want to know, um, you know, along the way, if you haven't already filled them out, do have a couple questions regarding the jobs and the ability to rename that. So again, under settings, and jobs, this right here is set up to just jobs only. You cannot rename this. So feel free to fill out that poll if maybe that is something you would like to be able to rename. And you know, if we get enough feedback, we'll definitely take that back and work with our developers and see what we can do. And then last but not least, before we do open up our Q and A uh, session here, um, I just want to let you guys know that we do have a webinar coming up uh, for next month, for the month of December, and then another little mini one uh, in January for you guys. It's going to be talking about PTO. So keep your guys, uh, keep your eyes peeled for that, and be on the lookout. Uh, there should be a link coming up here shortly, if not already, for you to click on if you want to go ahead and sign up for that uh, webinar as well. Again, we're going to discuss PTO, how to renew. Uh, uh, PTO and just kind of general account uh, maintenance while we get ready to close out the year and get ready for the new year. All right. So let's take a look at some questions here. Okay. Great presentation, Bryn. There's a Thank lot of you. helpful information inside of there. So now we're just going to open it up for some Q&A. Are there any questions on how a job and project costing works or how to set it up okay looks like not too many other questions All right. and again while we're waiting for maybe a couple other questions to come in I do also want to um, let you know I know earlier I did show you my employee uh, punch page that was on the website um, so that screen that we did see let me go ahead and pull that up for you so that screen that we are looking at um, for the employee with those items that are listed, um, it's gonna be the same view as they would if they're using the app uh, to punch in and out. Um, oh, something else uh, I'm glad I brought this up to mention too. So if you do happen to have employees who maybe are working on different jobs throughout the day or uh, just different you know, projects and tasks that they're trying to track, so again, I'm on my punch page right now and I can see here I have a punch out button as well as a switch job button. So if I click on this switch job, it's just gonna take me to a new punch page. So I can go ahead and select all new information. 
So maybe I'm working in accounting, maybe I'm still, maybe I'm front of house, we'll say. We'll choose uh, maybe the same customer, Bryn. We'll say uh, it's onboarding for a project and task. Let's go ahead and let's just say process implementation. So I'll go ahead and now I have an update button right here. And I get, again, my little success message telling me that everything is good to go. And then let's go ahead and log into that admin account here. So now again, 1116, let's go ahead and open up my time card punch. So from 210 to 221, this was the first initial information that I did log. And then because my employee came in and they did update the uh, items that they were working on, I can see that new punch. So again, they punched out at 221 and then immediately punched into a new set of items here at 221. And that information is listed right here. So employees can come in and they can switch their uh, information for all of these uh, items that they are, you know, that you're looking to track for them. Uh, we had a question from Jessica Brin, yeah. just asking, you know, do you have to use customer project and task all at the same time or can you just set up to use one like job and project or do they all have to be together? Yeah, so great question. So if you want to come in here and you just want to use, um, you know, one item. So again, job and project costing setup. You don't have to have um, any of the, you know, these two, for example, if you didn't want to use these two and just this one. Um, you're more than welcome to fill just this uh, column out. And then in your employee profiles, if you don't want you know the other stuff viewing to them, you can come to my uh, employee profile under job and project costing. Again, maybe we just want them looking at customers. We can go ahead and make everything else set to off. And let's go ahead and save that. And let's log into a employee profile here. Again, let's do a switch job. So now we can see that customer event is the only thing that is viewable to my employee at this time. So if you are looking just for them to use one specific category, you know, you're more than welcome to do so. You don't have to use all, but if you do need to, uh, they're there if you need them. You're welcome, Jessica. Yeah, you're very welcome. And then we did have a off topic question, Bryn. Mm -hmm. uh, did you wanna go ahead and answer this one for us? Uh, yeah, what, let's have it. So uh, we just wanted to know, Dana wanted to know uh, as far as setting up, uh, for example, like a set number of hours in bulk for an employee, could you do that as far as scheduling goes? Um, are you talking about add bulk PTO? No, uh, more for scheduling. Could you add hours in bulk on a schedule for your employees? Yeah. So if you come into, I'm assuming you're probably using your employee schedule right here. So we do have a function in the schedule. You can come in, you can add the hours that you would like. So I do have a couple of uh, shifts already preset. Let's go ahead and just choose one here. So once I save this, what you can actually do, um, once I click on this item, so if I do edit, we have a copy this shift. So if I do copy shift, you can actually apply this to, you know, all your employees or just specific ones. And then it's gonna ask you for those dates that you want to go ahead and apply it to. So maybe I wanna do it for the 16th as well as the 17th. And then go ahead and press copy now. And then just go ahead and confirm that you wanna go ahead and copy that shift. And now we're gonna see that information listed here. So you could do this and then something else that you could do as well. Um, after you've, you know, you've come in and that you've published it, we do have right next to that publish button, we have a copy uh, icon. So if you click on this copy, you can say that you wanna copy the schedule from so we're gonna go ahead, let's just say the 15th through the 20th. And let's say we wanna schedule, uh, copy it to the, we'll just say the 22nd to the 27th, and we'll say copy now. And we'll go ahead and confirm copying that. So now we can see that that schedule, since it was basically the same, has been added to these weeks as well. So you just need to come in, set it up the way you'd like it, and then once you have it, uh, just go ahead, again, use this little copy icon right here, put those dates in and you'll be good to go. I think that's what you were looking for. Yeah, it looks like she said, wonderful. Perfect. Uh, so you're welcome, Dana. We're glad that that helped. Yeah. Are there any other questions that we could help answer as far as job and project costing goes or anything that we, we have a couple minutes, we could definitely answer. Yeah. Some questions on how on the clock works. Uh, if not, we do have a upcoming webinar that we would love for everyone to join in. It is going to be about 
PTO renewal for your employees. So we're getting close to the end of the year, leading ourselves into the new year. So we're just going to go over, you know, the best way to renew your PTO. So go ahead and click that and you can go ahead and register and be a part of that. Oh, and something else I just thought of. Um, so I don't think I mentioned pay rates at all. So if you were looking to assign uh, pay rates to a specific job, uh, so unfortunately that is a limitation with the system at this time. Uh, you cannot you know, go into your uh, jobs or customer project task and say I want to assi assign a specific amount um, for you know, like an hourly rate. We do have an hourly uh, rate option you can put in the employee profile. So if you just go to employees here, and then again, let's open up my test employee. We do have pay rates, but it's just going to look at the uh, pay categories that we have here. So when you do pull that report, if you are looking to kind of invoice someone, maybe like a customer um, for maybe work uh, performed, just go ahead, uh, take that, you know, you could do a job report, uh, take that information, take those total hours, and then whatever you would have uh, billed them at, you can go ahead and, you know, input that into your software and it can calculate it for you. Um, so again, at this time, we don't have that, but if that is something you're looking for, uh, please let us know, give us your feedback, and we'll be sure to take that to our developers and see what we can do to get that going. All right, thanks, Bryn. You're welcome. All right, well, if there are no more questions, I'm just gonna call out again that PTO renewal webinar coming up. Go ahead and join us for that as well. We've enjoyed going through job and costing with you, and we hope to see you next time Thank you so much for joining everyone and thanks Bryn for that great presentation. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure and thank you again for everyone who attended. We're very happy you guys were able to attend and we can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Bye.